in a remarkable show of bipartisanship. Today in the United States House of Representatives, they held an open hearing on the subject of UFOs, one in a series that's expected to be ongoing in hopes of unraveling what the US government actually knows about the UFO UAP phenomenon. Three witnesses, David Fravor, Ryan Graves, and David Grush, laid out their testimony in regards to how they encountered the phenomenon of UFOs and put it squarely on the congressional record. Where this leads is anyone's guess, especially in regards to aviation safety and the testimony of David Grush that the US government has in its possession downed examples of technology that for lack of a better term is not of this earth. What that actually entails remains to be seen. This could all be a huge disinformation campaign of some type, but it could also be something more. My guest today, Representative Tim Burchett of East Tennessee, was one of those members of Congress asking the questions and coordinating the hearing. And my question to him is where do we go from here? You have fallen into Event Horizon with John Michael Godier. Representative Tim Burchett, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me on, brother. It's a real honor, and I appreciate you guys very much. And I appreciate today's hearings because that those will were what I believe were exactly what was needed at this juncture. And I was very impressed with the hearings and what came out of it. What surprised you the most? Well, I guess a good, I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney, obviously, but a good attorney will tell you, you never ask a question unless you know the answer. And I, I saw, I, I knew a lot where the questioning was going and I knew those guys history. And, you know, I've been in this thing, just by accident. I mean, I've been, I've been a kind of a UFO follower for since I was a little kid, but I, and so I knew where a lot of the questioning was going, but I'd already, I've talked to so many different people and so many different levels of this that nothing they said to me surprised me because I'd all heard it. And, but I, but it worked. I wanted to get it under oath. I wanted somebody that wasn't, you know, just somebody that had some ax to grind or some some nut come in here and just you know start saying all this stuff it was these were people that were had great credentials so i i think we we really hit home on the transparency issue and the lack thereof and just what's at stake in this country and i and I was very proud of the members that, that that did. Some of them slipped out of it a little bit, but I, I told everybody, at least on our side of the aisle, I was trying to keep it nonpartisan, and we had some slip-ups, but it, uh, you know, this country needs to get to the bottom of this, and it's not a partisan issue. Well, the Democrats uh, in the uh, in the hearing also seem to agree with that, and, you know, kept it... Uh, Kept it to the important thing, because I think after this hearing, one thing is clear based on the testimony of the pilots, David Fravor, it, it's very clear that this is a national security issue of some type. And right. it's an unknown national security issue, which is the scariest type. Would you agree? I would agree. I, I'm not as worried about it as everybody else is, because honestly, with that technology, they, they can do us in. I just, you know, this thing's been going on for hundreds if not thousands of years and i just think you know we're we think a lot too much of ourselves sometimes i think but that's me true maybe but I, at maybe i'm time, oversimplifying it i'm not sure i don't know it almost in some ways seems like something changed you know um over the last yeah. 80 years uh but again as you say what they could have uh, made a move against us at any time probably in our history so well, there's that point, but at least there's a wider recognition now that it is a national security issue based on Ryan Graves and uh, Fravor. Now, David Grush is a very different story. Here we have something regarding recovered materials. If we can find anything about that, do you think there is any way to get that in front of our scientific community at large? At large, I'm not sure. And I'm not sure that it's not already out there. It's just that they don't know what they're looking at. That's the problem with a lot of these bureaucrats. They're not lying to us. They're telling us the wrong answer. 
but they're not lying because they've um, uh, it's just what they know and and what they know is not what's what's real it's it's almost um, embarrassing how little um, some of them them do know about what's going on but there has to be somebody in the know somewhere and how well, there, you, are, there are there are and them? <laughs> there are and i've talked to some of the people it's just you know they they have to be very careful and i have to be very careful because one they could be telling me something that they're not supposed to be talking about even though i'm supposed to have clearance and two they could be telling me something false whether intentional or unintentional and then i I parade that out there, and then that's our one bite at that apple. And then they, they put a false flag out there, and it just discredits the whole thing. That Now, there's a history of that in the U.S. government, right, where they 100%. something out like that, and then it turns out to be something completely different. Uh, 100%. But, this, but this hit very high with Congress and also, you know, the Senate and talking about bills and amendments and things like that to the NDAA, where this isn't going to go away. Um, so what's next for the House? When is the next hearing? What's that going to focus on or have you even thought about it? Uh, yeah, well, you know, a good pool player doesn't just hit the first ball. He's looking at three, three balls down, you know, and I've been trying to think of that ahead of time. Because what everybody was worried they were going to call off this hearing. You know, we had some we've had incredible roadblocks in this thing, top to bottom. And uh and so we've um, we accomplished our first goal just to get it out there and get a lot of people talking about it and getting some information under under oath. And um, so we I would like to look at field hearings. They're a lot they're open, and and an a individual member can call them. And I could call one and have one at my farm there in Knoxville if I wanted to which I've talked about doing, but I don't know if I want all those folks using my, my bathroom or not. My wife would flip out, but, um, well, could you do it though at an air force base, you know, I and yeah. go right on. Well, that's a thought. You could do one at area 51, but you know, but these places are all, uh, you know, they're basically t-shirt stands. The implement, you know, they, uh, there's talk of doing a Codell to area 51 and that's great. Let's go out there. Let's get our picture made at Air 50, Area 51 inside of one of the empty hangars. But, you know, we're not going to show up. We're not going to announce three weeks before we go out. And then all of a sudden we're going to walk up and there's going to be a UFO or something. It's just not going to happen. They're going to move it. And they, um, it's, I mean, it's just, it's just one on one with these bunch, this bunch. They get it. They know how to hide it. And we've got enough lazy and or corrupt people here in Washington that, you know, they march to the beat of the dollar bill. Now, going down to the Air Force Base in Florida and basically getting stonewalled, you and uh, some of your colleagues in the House, what was that like? What um, what were you, what was that supposed to be and where did it go so wrong? Well, I predicted that actually, because I, it just, you just, just don't get the call and then go do it. And then all of a sudden it's there. Um, and if it was, I'd have been very skeptical. But, you know, we get down there, we're told we're going to see colored pictures. We're going to see the craft. We're going to see, I mean, you're going to talk to the pilot. And then we get down there and we're, we're shown some very terrifying stuff about our country and our defense system and, and uh, how we're woefully unprepared against some of our enemies. And they weren't going to tell us anything about the UAPs or UFOs. There weren't any pilots in there. And, I mean, there was lined up, man. You had all the, there's more brass in there than you could shake a stick at. And there's, I'm pretty sure there was a couple of, I call them spooks from the CIA or one of those agencies were there and uh, monitoring everything. And we were basically just denied everything. And then we, Matt Gates. Myself and Luna just said, we're out of here. We're going, we're calling Washington. We're going to find out what the hell's going on. And Matt uh, serves on the Armed Services Committee. And they were denying us access, basically. And so we, uh, we, 
made calls, Matt did, and through his negotiations, we they brought in these they brought in some pilots that told us some stuff and drew some pictures and things of craft that were not of this world that they'd seen, and we um. But it wasn't what we were told, and you know, it's now it's just hearsay, and it's just uh, it's just more more of the same, more of the delay tactics. I had a, and stop me if I repeat myself. I'm on two hours of sleep. It's been a long, long week already, uh, but and I need to get off here in a minute. I got a, another deal I got to run to here, but um. You know, I had a piece of legislation in the FAA reauthorization, an amendment that just said, if you as a airline pilot, not a military pilot, but an airline pilot, have some sort of aerial encounter and you make a report of it to the FAA, that Congress is to be brief, is to be uh, issued that report as well. And I was told that the, not the intelligence committee, but the intelligence community blocked that. Now, what the hell are a bunch of bureaucrats unelected telling us, the Congress, what we can and cannot see or do? And they, and our leadership, and I can't get anybody to, they just shrug. It's the most gutless thing I've ever seen. My last question for you, Tim, uh, is, is simply this. When you find out who to contact, presumably from David Grusin's side of a skiff, you know, when you're able to do that, you find out you, you need to contact about recovered objects. Um, are you going to subpoena them and get them up in front of Congress in a closed or open session? Closed sessions are worthless. If I can get them in an open session, then I will. All right. Best of luck. And I, I look forward to checking in with you again as this all, all unfolds. Thanks, guys. Let's keep fighting. Appreciate you all. Transparency. Yep. We got to have it. Thank you, guys. Got to have it. Thanks, Tim. Event Horizon and my channel are now available as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube memberships. Early ad-free episodes, bonus episodes, and sleep-focused content. Sign up now by clicking the links below to your platform of choice.